AirAsia and its long-haul affiliate AirAsia X have filed yet another lawsuit against MHB's unit Malaysia Airports Sepang in the latest development in a long-running feud between the two parties. This time, the low-cost carriers are claiming 479.78 million ringgit for negligence at KLIA 2. The firms filed a writ of summons at the KL High Court against Malaysia Airports Sepang on Tuesday. The claim is for the loss and damage caused by negligence on the part of Malaysia Airports Sepang in the management, operation, maintenance and or provision of airport services and facilities at KLIA 2. The legal action comes after AirAsia and AAX were made to pay 41.54 million ringgit last month to Malaysia Airports Sepang for outstanding PSC. AirAsia CEO Riyad Asmat and AAX CEO Benjamin Ismail said in a joint statement today that they had no choice but to file the claim as MHB and Mavcom had forced their hand. The East Coast Rail Link is likely to be the only source of immediate new order book for contractors in the upcoming Budget 2020. CGS CIMB research analyst Sharizan Rosli says the research house is cautiously optimistic that new tender packages of the ECRL project can get off the ground in the fourth quarter of this year. According to its estimates, the portion of civil works for local contractors stands at between 9 billion and 11 billion ringgit. However, the research house does not rule out a possible delay in the ECRL's fourth quarter initial tenders, which could make a comeback with 3 billion to 5 billion ringgit worth of initial subcontract works in the first half of 2020. Shahrizan adds that IJM Corp remains one of the potential beneficiaries of the ECRL's initial awards. And should Putrajaya revive some real jobs, IJM could also be a potential contender. He says MRCB may also participate in the ECRL tenders, although there are indications that the timing of the tenders is unlikely to be in the near future. CGS CIMB has a hold call on these two stocks, with a target of 2 ringgit 29 for IJM and 78 cent for MRCB. Petronas has set up a venture capital arm with an initial fund of 350 million US dollars or 1.46 billion ringgit to invest in startups that will complement and support its core oil and gas business. The Petronas corporate venture aims to bankroll startups involved in Industry 4.0, advanced materials and specialty chemicals, as well as those focusing in the future of energy. It will be looking for investment opportunities in North America, Europe, the Asia Pacific, as well as Malaysia to spur local entrepreneurship and the domestic venture capital ecosystem. The plan is to be a minority stakeholder in early to growth stage firms, leveraging Petronas's global network across the energy value chain for a strategic fit with its co investors and partners and assist these startups in scaling up. MOF has yet to receive a takeover proposal from Hong Kong-based RRJ Capital for Plus Malaysia. But Minister Lim Guan Eng is confident that the other offers submitted to Kazana National would be more attractive and beneficial to the people. According to Bernama, Lim believes that proposals from business entities cannot compare with the offers made by the public sector because of the profit element involved. He says at the end of the day, if PLUS were to be taken over by a private entity, it would result in higher tolls. Over the weekend, The Edge reported that RRJ Capital is offering 3 billion ringgit cash to buy all of PLUS. Citing sources, The Weekly said that if the bid is successful, the company will reduce toll rates by 20% across the board. Its proposal was submitted to Kazana National and Minister of Works Barubian last week. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng has clarified that the government will only consider reinstating the GST if there is indisputable evidence to show that it is indeed the will of the rakyat. He points out that PH had promised to abolish the tax when it stood for election in May 2018. Lim adds that he has not received any instructions from Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad after the PM said Putrajaya could conduct a study on the reintroduction of the tax regime if it was really what the people want. According to tax experts, calls to bring back the GST are unlikely to gain traction among the rakyat. 
They told the Edge Financial Daily that doing so may also lead to price increases and profiteering again, on top of the government being accused of flip-flopping on its policies and causing the loss of business confidence. Instead, they say Putrajaya should enhance the SST, widen its scope and tax base and enforce it well. Well...